I'm Pastor Joey Rogers and welcome to the Prophecy File Update. This is another portion of the message that I brought to the congregation just a few days ago, right here at Pace Assembly. And I encourage you to get it in its entirety. If you have only seen this portion, go back and check out the others that are available at our Pace Assembly app and our social media platform. The information that I'm bringing is certainly shocking to a lot of people, but to those who believe and understand the times and know what they need to do, it is an alert and it is the sound of the trumpet to get us prepared for the next great event on the calendar of God, the rapture of the church. Let's take you into the sanctuary where we're bringing you another portion of the Prophecy File Update. Here's what the Bible says concerning the last days in society. He says, society, Jesus said himself in Matthew 24, Timothy said in 2 Timothy 3, lawlessness, immorality, selfishness, rebellion, violence, greed, hedonism, and despair. If you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, it's very interesting to me that there are 18 different identifications of what society is going to be like in the last days prior to the coming of the Lord. If you break that into three categories, you have six, six, six which is the profile of the Antichrist. Let's go to this first one. Here's a warning that's coming from a Bulgarian survivor warning America that socialism, listen to this, socialism is actually the Antichrist system. This is from a survivor. He played in a rock and roll band, even a Christian band after he got saved. I summarize this and this is what happened. Listen to this. Listen to this in light of the ruling in in California by the governor. When the socialists of Bulgaria started hearing them sing more about God because socialism, communism, Marxism is all an atheistic, godless ideology. They told them there'll be no more concerts. You shut your mouth. You can't sing about God anymore. And here we have in the California government this morning on this Sunday morning as they're gathering in churches right now being told you can't sing let me tell you what that is go all the way back to the book of Exodus the devil has no new ideas the book of Exodus says that Pharaoh himself told Moses you can go out in the wilderness but you can't carry your cattle with you Moses said that's how we worship when we bring a burnt offering sacrifice if we don't go out there uh, then we we're going to stay right here if we can't have our cattle he said we're going out to worship and we're carrying these animal sacrifices to worship unto our God and Pharaoh backed down and Moses took the nation of Israel out for three days of worship in the wilderness and then came back because the devil don't want you going very far that's the government control and the very spirit of Pharaoh that is telling churches this morning you can't sing you can't chant well every time the devil tells me I can't sing a song to the Lord I will lift my voice louder higher than I ever have these are the signs of the coming of the Lord I don't have time to stay in that. Look at this, cancel culture. I've already dealt with that a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, if your kids are coming home with paperwork from school or anywhere else, dealing with cancel culture, what's that all about? It's the shaming of people whose views are different than theirs, especially on social media. Don't try to fight your fight on social media. That's the most idiotic thing you could do. Because I already know, and so do you, that when several doctors tried to stand up in front of the Supreme Court to tell America that hydrochloroquine was a good thing, isn't it amazing? There's only 23 individuals, according to the last report, that are in Africa, in a nation where they're dealing with malaria, who's been taking hydrochloroquine now for some time. They're the only ones that have gotten sick in that entire nation of millions of people. Why? Because here these doctors stand in front of the Supreme Court and they make their own declaration, having studied their own information and told everyone body about this medication and suddenly YouTube Facebook and everybody else expunges that kind of ideology well thank God there was a wonderful uh, uh, Kenyan born African American woman doctor who stood up and said I'm not only a doctor but I'm a preacher of the gospel come on now talking about lawlessness look at this the defunding of police departments Pastor, don't you know what's going on with police firing in on black individuals and this? Look at the stats, ladies and gentlemen. I looked at it myself from the FBI. More white people have been killed. I'm not here to pose some, uh, some, some friction. 
Because the problem is nobody wants to sit down and talk about it. There is a faction of evil that is in the streets that have undermined everything about the conversation between white, black, Asian, and everybody else. And it is from the pit of hell. And it will not be inside of this house. I can tell you we have black, white, Asian, Spanish, American, whatever you want to call them. They're in this place and watching right now. And that is the church. And I will fight for that because everybody is equal under the sight of almighty God so they've taken one billion dollars away from New York City cops what's going to happen with that it's going to fall into lawlessness look at Mr. Biden saying right here I wish we would have taught more Muslim faith inside of our public schools hold it time out we didn't build this nation on the Quran We wrote the Constitution from the Word of God, and that's the reason why you're free to sit in here this morning. Let's go a little deeper. All right, now, I want to talk to you about something, and it's going to be, it might not necessarily sit well with you, but I'm going to tell you the truth this morning. You can look it up for yourself. Let me tell you something. The Black Lives Matter Global Network is being supported by the funding of individuals like George Soros who wants to flip this entire nation upside down and make it a socialist country. I don't have time to stay here very long, but I want you to look at this chart right here. Look at this chart. I have prepared this for your understanding today because the, and you can find this on any of the websites right now. This is where I lifted it from. Look at Marxism. Look at what they believe in. Marxism evolves into socialism evolves into communism and who's picking up those ideologies the black lives matter movement there's over one billion dollars that have been put into the coffers by major american companies into black lives matter and let me just say to you they haven't one time to my knowledge and looking paid for any child to go to college they haven't put any produce in anybody's uh, trunk of their car because they are a marxist organization founded by a professing March, Marxist transsexual. Look it up yourself. Okay? You don't have to hear me. Look it up for yourself. And take out Mr. Biden and take out Mr. Trump. No Christian can vote their clear biblical conscience for a group of people that support the killing of the unborn from the womb all the way to the tomb no Christian this is not about democratic parties and republican parties anymore this is about believing God or succumbing to the devil let me tell you if we all listen to the mother of Jacob Blake and her pastor who said citizens police officers, firemen, clergy, politicians, do, uh, do Jacob justice on this level and examine your hearts. We need healing as I pray for my son's healing physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I also have been praying for, uh, even before this, for the healing of our country, she says. God has placed each and every one of us in this country because he wanted us to be here. Clearly, we can see by now that I have a beautiful brown skin. But take a look at your own hand and whatever shade it is, it's beautiful as well. How dare we hate what we are. No one is superior to another, she said. And the only supreme being is God himself. Please, let's begin to pray for healing for our nation. We are the United States. We have been united, she asked and said. America is great when we behave greatly. Ladies and gentlemen, let it begin in the house of God to pray for the healing of our nation. Come on now. So let me talk a little bit here about lawlessness. It is the spirit of Antichrist. Hear what I'm telling you. In Portland, why in the world, if this thing was about race and about George Floyd, why are you burning the flag and Bibles in Portland? Why do you want to burn the Bible? What's the Bible done? Except tell you right from wrong and who's the real savior. Now you're seeing the heart of people evolve. The Bible says this in Matthew 24, at this time, at that time, 
What time? This time we're in right now. The coming of the Lord time. Many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate one another. And many false leaders will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of law. Listen carefully. This is the message God's been burning in my spirit now. Because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many, and he's speaking about believers, would wax cold. People would become disinterested because they're seeing the lawlessness in the land. They're seeing iniquity. They're seeing crime. They're seeing riots. They're seeing, they're seeing what they think is no hope. And what's going on? Churches are being shuttered and pastors are being fined in the United States of America for preaching the gospel. What's it all about? My friend Victor Starsky said, after quoting this passage of scripture, this is how I knew I should bring it to you today. He said, I'm guarding from this same passage of scripture, I'm guarding my eyes and ears concerning the daily amount of the news style reporting that I'm following. I'm guarding my heart from the foolish arguments of the root of bitterness toward anyone. I'm practicing having a thankful heart because kindness of our maker upon my life has been extraordinary. Don't you love it? I will remain steadfast and hopeful in my trusting of the Lord to complete every good thing that is not yet completed because he's trustworthy. I will continue to allow the Bible to read me as I read it. He asked the question, how are you doing with that? How are you doing with that? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 12, because iniquity or lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Second Thessalonians 2, 7 says the same thing concerning the last days. For the mystery of iniquity or lawlessness doth already work. Only he who now lets will letteth until he be taken out of the way. This term is apostasy. He said there would be a falling away, apostatizing. What does that look like? When people's love grows cold and iniquity or lawlessness is abounding in our land where we're at right now. He says the love of people, the love that people have for the Lord Jesus Christ will begin to wax cold. You can't hardly say anything today. People are so offended. What does that apostasy look like? It is self-seeking and worldliness. People want what they want, when they want it, how they want it. It is dissension and division. That's what apostasy looks like. When you're seeing people, the Bible says when they're falling away, it looks like dissension and division. Where people are discouraged and they're disheartened and confused about what they're supposed to do. And many just cool off. This is what's going on right now. This is the attempt of the enemy to back the church up by shuttering the doors or we'll find you. Don't you sing or we'll find you. Thank God for Liberty Council and other attorneys that are willing to take up the cause. So I say this, y'all better get ready. I can never happen here. The ACLU already knows where Pace, Florida is at. And if you thought they would come, they, that they won't come against you for showing up at church if they pass a law for you not to pray or sing, sounds like Daniel to me. Well, let's take a little word from Daniel, where when they passed a law and said you can't pray, Daniel went right back to where he was. Some of you might consider this arrogance, but Daniel threw open the window, the Bible said, and prayed like he'd always prayed. In the face of the lion's den. What does it look like? It looks like persecution. Many people backing off, and when you start getting persecuted for your faith, you wind up shutting your mouth. That's falling away. Unless a person truly believes and trusts in Christ, whatever affection that they had is soon dampened and questioned and opposed. That's the reason why you've got to build yourself up on your most holy faith. Read the Word of God. Pray like you never have. Because persecution is going to get rough in the days ahead. If you're a Christian. If you're just sheeple and you go along to get along, then the first time that something happens that 
they write a law in Florida that says you can't do such and such. Let me tell you, I've wore the mask, you wore the mask, but the mask is not far from the mark if we go the way we're going right now. And guess who's going to do it? They're going to stick their hand right out there. Put it right there because I need to eat. The devil is a lie. You better get used to fasting. What happens? A society collapses into lawlessness. We're going to defund the police? So what you going to do when they start breaking through the window? Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? Well, I'm going to get my gun. Okay. And you shoot them. And then they come and arrest you because you shot somebody. I'm just saying. Lawlessness and immorality happens when people start falling away. Lawlessness, godlessness. What is that? It's anything that forsakes God. Are you a Christian? Well, yeah, as long as it's convenient, then you're not a Christian. It's just going to get hot. Did you hear what I said? Your faith is going to be put on trial like it never has. And Satan has been waiting. I'm coming to a close here. Satan has been waiting to announce the this antichrist, the spirit of antichrist is already among us. Paul said it was, it was in his day already happening. But today we're witnessing it like I have never seen in my lifetime. And Satan has been waiting to make the announcement. And what is it? What is it that's holding back this figure, the antichrist, from coming? It is the restrainer. The one who is holding back darkness since the very beginning of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So why is it taking so long? Well, first of all, the loving kindness of God is still got the door open like Noah's door on the ark saying, come before the rain. Get in the ark now. Because when this happens, you're going to go to bed, and the next morning you're going to wake up, and everything's going to be changed. What happens when the restrainer is gone? Come here, Ty. Come here, Paul. Quick. Right up on the platform. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come right up here. Stand right here. Stand right here. Here you are. You're going to play the good guy because you got that white jacket on. You're going to play the bad guy. <laughs> you're the devil. Oh, my God. You're trying to get him. So come on, come on, come on, get him. There is one that's standing between you and the devil. But what happens when the Bible says he's taken out of the way, which means he steps out of the middle? What happens? The restraining power that's holding back darkness steps out of the middle. And there is nothing to withhold Complete lawlessness. The Bible says in Genesis 6 and 3, God's spirit will not always strive with men. The word strive there is the word government. The Holy Spirit is the governing power that is in the believer in the church today. So what happens when the restraining of lawlessness steps out of the way? Pastor, has it been there? Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. That God himself held back the judgment until the righteous could get out of the city. Look at Noah's day. That God held back the rain and the judgment until the message for 120 years. What is it going to take for us to get serious? Do we need 120 years? We don't have that much time. Look at the days of Egypt. God judged Egypt. And watch this. While the world, the Egyptians were getting the plagues, the restrainer was holding back the darkness from the Hebrews on the other side of the street that had no locusts in their house, no flies. Look at Job. The Holy Spirit was there to hold back. He said, you can do everything but take his life. Now look at that. Look at that. God said you can take anything but his life. 
And what did the enemy do? Did the enemy go, you know, I think I'll just put some boils on him. That'd be enough. Oh, no. The thief comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy. So what did he do? He, the first thing he took, my God, I feel the anointing of God here at 12, 0, 1220. What happened? The first thing the enemy stole was his cattle. What was his cattle? His worship. You let the devil take your worship. And it won't be long that he'll take your family, he'll take your house, he'll take your property. The storm came and he just kept getting bad news and bad news. And Job said, I will not sin or lose my integrity with God. So what in the world is going to happen prior to the rapture? This great apostasy and deception is going to take place. The Bible says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. We're living in a day of Christian unbelief. Where people that come to church and sing the songs, but when it comes right down to believing, it ain't happening. How do you know that? Because they're denying the virgin birth of Jesus Christ today, the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody. So you know what God's going to do? The Holy Ghost said to me last night, said, tell them about God's executive order. He's going to bypass everybody and he's going to put the executive order. The Bible says, I want you to be soon shaken in your spirit or in your mind. This is what the Holy Ghost is saying to us right now. Neither by spirit or by word or by letter as at the day of the Lord. He said, hand, I don't want you to be shaken. What's going to happen? Executive order number one, it's about to take place. The church is about to be raptured. Verse number one says that we're going to be gathered together. Executive order number one, you want to know what's going to happen next? The rapture of the church is about to take place. Every believer is about to be snatched off of this people planet. Are you with me right here? Come on. The right, listen, the righteous people are going to leave and all that's left is unrighteousness. Look at verse number 10. Verse number 10 tells us what it's going to be like after the righteous are gone. The only thing that's left is unrighteousness. And what does that look like? Why is it? What calls them unrighteous? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They refuse to believe the Bible and what God had to say. Not only that, but God sends them strong delusion. That's where we are today. Have you ever seen people today like it is today from the politicians all the way throughout society that are deluded in their minds? They will speak a lie to you and just people receive it just like it's truth. The Bible said they'll get strong delusion and believe a lie that they might be damned. Why? Let me tell you something. For every one of those leaders in our government and around this world that pass laws of unrighteous behavior, there is a, listen to me, there is a greater judgment that will rest upon them according to Romans chapter number one because they have pleasure in unrighteousness. Executive order number two, the restrainer is removed. God is about to take not the Holy Spirit out of the world, He's going to change and go back to the way he operated in the Old Testament. Meaning he's not going to be like we have him now. Somebody said, oh, I can feel the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because he said he shall be, Jesus said he shall be in you. He's not just with you, he shall be in you. But in the Old Testament, he operated in a different frame. For Samson, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon him. For David, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon him and go back until the day of Pentecost when he came inside of us. So what's going to happen? The restrainer is going to be moved out of the way by God's executive order. Let me tell you about the Antichrist very quickly. Everything that I've mentioned here and a whole lot more, the Antichrist has these particular profiles about himself. He will be a great military, political, economic, and religious leader. He will have with him the false prophet, and he will have with him his entourage of those that help make his system work of socialism. That's what's coming. And the third executive order, the Antichrist has revealed that wicked one, the Bible says. But the Bible says there will be a mark placed in the head and the forehand of every individual on this people planet when the church is gone. Revelation 13, and they shall receive the mark or the number or his name. 
And everybody, pastor, if I take the mark, will I be able to still go to heaven? Absolutely not. The Bible said you'll be damned. So if you plan on living and missing the rapture, whatever you do, don't take the mark because the only alternative is for your head to be taken off. What happens? Look at verse 1 and 2. I don't want you to be troubled, he says, concerning our gathering together. What are we supposed to do until then? Verse 15, this entire chapter tells us. Verse 15 says, stand fast. Look at your neighbor and tell him, stand fast. Tell him, until he comes, stand fast. Hold to tradition. He's not talking about your traditions of, we're going to have turkey on Thanksgiving. He's saying, hold fast to the word of God that you have been taught by faithful preachers and teachers and that you've read yourself. What else did he say? He said, take good hope. Take good hope through grace into your life. Understand this, that the only hope that this world has is Jesus Christ. And the hope you have in your life is good hope today through the grace of God. And finally, he says, comfort your heart and establish you in every good work. Ladies and gentlemen, these are days of great deception. But it hasn't caught Jesus by surprise. Now, why am I standing up here preaching this to you today and taking the time I have? I was speaking to someone last night who is in the government, the federal government. And this source told me very clearly, we are preparing for things to get worse. Pastor, this is supposed to be a hopeful message. I don't know what it's going to look like the days that are ahead. If what we see in the streets comes across America, it could get bad before it gets better. And I can assure you, listen to me, we're in a position right now where everybody's hollering, give us a leader. I don't believe in this one. I don't believe in that one. Give us a leader. I'm going to tell you, I've already got my leader. And I can tell you, he's out of this world. His kingdom is not of this world. God is not interested. It's all a play of his divine hands of setting things in order. I can assure you, God's divine plan has already been written down. The only question is, are you part of it? Because these things are going to take place. We got to be the church in this hour. We got to be the people that we call ourselves to be. Otherwise, all this singing and preaching that we've been doing now, I've been doing this for 30 years. If I don't believe it now and stand in faith and truth, not when I'm in the pulpit, when I'm out there just like you, in the streets, in the stores, giving the gospel out to everybody. Listen, if you knew Jesus Christ could come back right now, What kind of urgency? How would you pray? How would you evangelize? I'm going to tell you where my heart has been. And then we're going to pray. I've heard the Holy Spirit saying to me in recent days, you focus on your families. You got family members right now that are not ready to meet Jesus Christ. You've got family members right now that if the rapture was to take place, they would not go. Not because they haven't heard it. Maybe they haven't. You've got to get the urgency of the hour because this ain't no game. Jesus is about to return. In an hour that you think not, the Son of Man is coming. Are you ready? Let me ask you a question beyond that before we pray. Are you concerned that anybody else is ready? Because we're living in a society today that it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about my little group. But my God, folks... David cried out and said, Doth no man care for my soul? I see a breaking. 
I see a breaking of hearts. I see a breaking of hearts of children. Spoke to two people last night, two preachers. They said in recent days, we've noticed a breaking that's taking place. I'm telling you, you know why? Because the people of God are praying. And you know why else? Because the grandmothers and the mother's prayers who have long since gone to heaven, God is pouring out those prayers from those golden vials. We got to be ready. Without a doubt, we're living in the perilous times that is written in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we need to have the understanding of the times and know what we need to do as believers. I want to encourage you to go now to our Pace Assembly app and the social media platforms of Pace Assembly and watch the latest episodes of the Prophecy Files update. Recently, I brought it to this congregation right here in the sanctuary of Pace Assembly and what you will hear will no doubt be alarming, but it will be a wake up call for every believer to be prepared for the next great event on the calendar of God, the rapture of the church. Go now to the Prophecy Files update at the Pace Assembly app or go to paceassembly.org and you'll get more information about our social media platform. You need to be informed. You need to be ready. And I believe without a doubt that Jesus Christ is coming soon.